Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome back to my shed. Uh, my subject today is uh, fermentation temperature control um, on the cheap. How to keep your wine or beer fermenting at the right temperature without spending a fortune and without spending up loads of, taking up loads of space. Now, the thing you probably, well, if you're into this stuff, you've probably come across the Inkbird controller. Um, that costs getting on for, well, it's 27 pounds um, British money. Um, and that allows you to manage the temperature up or down of your beer or wine. Um, it, it Very simple device, really. It's got a temperature probe. If it gets too cold, it turns on the heating power supply. If it gets too warm, it turns on the cooling power supply. Now, I bought one of these when I started home brewing and quickly found out there are some drawbacks with it. One is that you've got the device, but you need a heater. And the second part is that if you're going to do any cooling, you need a cooler, which is typically a fridge. Now, if depending on how you cool it and all the rest of it, you could end up buying uh, what a lot of people do, a greenhouse heater, a fridge, um, and the ink bird, and that can get quite expensive. And if you want to do a few brews at once, like for me, for example, I want to try and do three at once. I've got three fridges, three ink birds, three heaters. I'm not, that's, that's not, well, it's too expensive really and unnecessary. So I thought there might be a cheaper way of doing it um, using some, what's the word, Chinese components that you can get from eBay. And that's exactly what I've done. Now, if you're going to do this, there are some disclaimers. You need to be able to do some basic wiring. You're doing mains electricity um, and you've got to be able to make good connections and it's not complicated, but if you don't know what you're doing, then just don't do it. And if you do do it and you don't know what you're doing, you might electrocute yourself or burn your house down or even worse, ruin your beer. Another disclaimer is that this only works if you've got a cool place to do it. So I'm lucky. I live in uh, South Wales in the United Kingdom where the temperature rarely gets above 25 degrees C outside, let alone in my cool shed. So the, the, the way that this device works, I'm going to show you, is it warms the, the beer up and then it allows the ambient temperature, you know, the room temperature, the outside temperature, just to pull it down again and it just keeps pumping them up every time. So if you live in a hot place, this ain't going to really work for you. Right, here it is then. Um, I should say I've already connected this up and screwed it to a bit of board, um, and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in a minute. Um, and I'm not taking it apart just for the sake of this video, because you'll get it easily enough anyway. So it comes in the box, just a little plastic unit like this. It's got this wire coming out of it already with a little temperature probe on it. And then there are another um, four wires the black and the red one on this side is a says tells you on the back which is which. Um, that's for the power to plug into the wall, whether you know the power socket, and this is the output that goes to your heating device. Um, so, in my case, that's just a cheap heating band to go round a, a plastic bucket, and I'll well I'll show you what I've done under here. Um, maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. Right. So as I said, this this wire coming out of here that is just connected to the plug. Um, you can see what I've done here. I attached these. I soldered it actually, the the power, and I put some heat shrink around it to keep it safe. Um, I've also drilled a couple of holes in this backboard and put some cable ties just to hold everything where it is. I don't want it flopping around too much and having it on a board like that is quite convenient to handle. Um, this is the output to the heating band and I can show you that that just goes off and the wire goes to this band which you then wrap around the bottom of your fermentation vessel. Okay, that's a uh, that was, I got that extremely cheaply on eBay again, only six quid, I think. So, that's how you wire it up. When you want to use it, you tape the probe to the side of the fermentation vessel, 
I tape it with some packing tape and then I put some other padding on top of that just to keep it, well, insulated from temperatures in the outside world so it knows exactly what's going on in the vessel. Um, then I wrap the heating band around the base of the vessel and I've got some bits of string on the ends there. I don't know if you can see those, not very clearly, but I use a, a bungee cord then to keep that tight if I've got different sized vessels. Um, and then you have to set the temperature controls. Now, just, just like the ink bird or anything else, there are two values in here, a low one and a high one. It can be used for cooling as well, but I'm not gonna get into that. Um, the low one is the temperature at which the device will turn on the heating band. And the top one is the temperature at which it'll turn off the heating band. And you set each of those, well, I'll show you how you can do it now. So I'll plug it in right now. So what it is saying at the moment is that the temperature of the probe and the temperature in my shed, the outside temperature is, can you see that? It says 15.9. I think you can probably see that. And it's off. And the reason it's off is the two settings I've got in here is 15 degrees is the lower temperature and 15.4 is the higher temperature. So when this goes below 15 degrees, it's all centigrade by the way, it'll come on. And when it goes above 15.4, it'll go off again. Um, and I, can I demonstrate that? I don't know if I can get it that cold. Um, let me see. I'll tell you what, I'll reset it. So if it is currently what, 16 degrees. I will set it to come on at 15.9 and go off at 17. Okay, so 15.9, so the lower one, hold down that button until it starts flashing. Right, 15.9 I said, didn't I? So there's up and down arrows on there, so it'll come on at 15.9. Oh, it's come on. And it'll go off at 17. Now, so at the moment, the actual temperature in here is 16. So that's less than 17. So it's on its way up to 17. And this band, I can tell you right now, is warming up. Now, if I put that on there, or just warm it up with my fingers, it'll go up to 17. And I'm telling you right now, it'll turn off. Boom, there it goes. So, and it'll, so this is still rising because I warmed that probe up with my fingers. But you start see it start cooling down again now. And as soon as it gets down to 15.9, it'll turn the band back on again. So that's, that's really all there is to it. Um, there's one other thing I'm gonna show you now, and that is how I set up the, the vessel um, to be efficient. Um, so let's do that next. Right, so here's one in action. This is another one. I mean, I've got three of these all together. Um, so that's, well, as I said earlier, one of the reasons I got the cheap version is because I want to do more than one at once. Um, this is um, the wire for the temperature probe, which is taped onto the side of this bucket full of beer, which will be fermenting soon as soon as I put some yeast in it. I uh, only got this ready last night. The heater for this one is not that um, heating band I showed you earlier. I've got a pad, um, one of those heating pads. I'm not gonna lift it up, but you can see the end of it peeping out of there. So I've plonked plonk the whole bucket on top of the heating pad, and this is on a bit of insulation as well. So the heating all comes from below. If it drops below, what have I got this set on now? If it drops below 20.9, it'll come on. And when it gets to 21, it'll turn off. So that's, you know, that's a tenth of a degree is the difference that I set at. Now, in order to keep this um, at that steady temperature, I'm gonna lag it. And the way I lag it is with my, hang on, I'll just get it. My puffer jacket. So I've got a, you know, a winter coat. I can put that around the vessel like this. Oh, knock it everywhere. Zip that up. 
And then that, I'm not going to zip it up now, it's a bit of a nuisance, but that then just sits there, snug as can be, with the, the temperature pad, um, warming it up every time it gets too cold, and turning it off when it gets warm enough. Now there's one thing to watch out for on this, and that is that when the beer ferments, it warms up. So if you've got your, if you say you start off at, you know, I don't know, whatever, you're 20 degrees C, um, wrap this all up and throw your yeast in. If it's too well insulated, it's going to start getting above 21 or start getting above what you want it to be. So you need it, you can't lag it too carefully. You've got to have it, the chance for it to cool down and let the heating do its bit. And then uh, it cools down and warms up and that's where the balance lies. And that's how you get your, your control. There we are. So if you want to have a go at that, get on eBay, search for temperature controller. Those devices will come up fairly quickly. Make sure you get the right one. There are some 12 volt ones on there. That's no good if you're going to plug it into the mains. Um, um, be careful if you are going to wire it up yourself or get a grown up to help you. <laughs> um, and I hope you found that interesting. If you've got any comments, please make them down below. And um, if you do like this stuff, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.